In recent weeks, the level of insecurity in Koki State has been alarming. On the 5th of June, many people were feared dead and several houses raised during a renewed Basa Igbura crisis in Basa local government area of the state. Well, joining us to shed more light on this is the Honourable Commissioner for Information in um, Kogi State, Mr. Kingsley Fowell. Thank you so much, Mr. Fowell, for joining us. Thank you very much uh, for having me and uh, good evening viewers around the world. Great. Um, I'm, I'm super interested in the the, the the way that these attacks keep happening. In October of 2021, six persons reportedly died um, in a communal clash. This was reported by police. Uh, sometime again um, in 2022, earlier this year, there was another clash. And then a few days ago, there's another clash. Uh, help us walk us through what exactly is the cause or is behind these communal clashes. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I, we are not comfortable with the, um, the insecurity brewing in Basa local government area. It is one of the 21 local government councils in Kogi State. Uh, so we cannot be talking of an alarming uh, rate of insecurity uh, in the state. We also read uh, a lot of reports uh, concerning the, the, the attacks and the violence there. Uh, we can report authoritatively that um, since it broke out, uh, we have less than 10 people uh, that we've lost. That's a very high figure because every single soul is precious to the government of Kogi State. Uh, what's actually happened in Basa has been an age-long hostility between two main tribes uh, that um, constitute uh, that local government. You have the Basa Kum and you have the Ibera Mozu. Uh, these uh, two groups have been at loggers' head for uh, years for hundreds of years uh, and in the last 16 years you know the thing has escalated to a very high uh, level and uh, you know in 2016 November we had a very serious crisis that the state government had to step in uh, to to be able to resolve a lot of things uh, have led to these hostilities uh, including this land disputes uh, between the two ethnic groups and also um, it also had to do with uh, dispute on um, uh, fish ponds uh, by the two uh, major ethnic groups. And also, you discover that um, this, uh, these two ethnic groups are in Nasarawa state. So whenever there is crisis uh, between the two ethnic groups in Nasarawa state, it will spill to Kogi state. So a lot of this has resulted into a lot of hostilities. Uh, some are political, some are even instigated by some traditional rulers uh, in those places. So we're having a very holistic approach at the moment to ensure mm. that anyone who is found uh, one team is uh, severely dealt with. As we speak, uh, the royal fathers of the two um, ethnic groups are, are giving very useful information uh, to the police uh, because as far as we are concerned, uh, no matter whose ox is gone, uh, we have to uh, attack the issue with bloody mindedness to okay. ensure that the lives of our people are safe. I am I'm, I'm made to understand that there are some um, elders and community leaders that are, have been arrested in um, connection to all of these ethnic clashes. I'm asking because um, if these are ethnic or like you said, some of them are from Nasarawa, there has to be some form of um, communication. Let's say a group from the state in Kogi goes to Nasarawa state to have a, some conversation. I'm, I'm wondering, does Kogi state have uh, a peace or reconciliation or any committee to address the issue because you talked about it being an age-long issue uh, and it has yeah. lingered for this long and now people are having to die for it. What has the government done to address these issues no matter how, you know, uh, pedestrian we are, we are it might a, be? We are working on a holistic mechanism and I would uh, tell you that since this administration came on board, we've been able to a very large extent has turned the tide of, of the crisis uh, rocking uh, that local government. And also, you would uh, uh, you know, the, the current issue has unraveled a lot of revelations, and the state government is setting up mechanism to be able to attack it from the root. I am not saying that 100% it is caused by some of these clashes in Nasarawa spilling over to Kogi State. We are attacking the ones that we can attack in the state, and we're also setting up mechanism to be able to have this conversation across borders that will be able to, you know, enlighten the people in Nasarawa State, the Basa, uh, people in Nasarawa State, of 
how their hostilities are already spilling to Kogi State. Kogi is known to be a very peaceful state uh, under this administration, as you can all attest to, as uh, the governor has won so many awards in ensuring peace uh, and stability. And what we are dealing with at the moment is not, um, it's not about insurgency or terrorism. It is about communal clashes. And the state government is working on a lot of mechanism uh, to be able to uh, put this to bed. As you are aware, you are not going to serve peace uh, a la carte. It, it's not going to work that way. The state government will have to work. The state government is doing that already, putting in place mechanism, putting in place apparatus to ensure that we are able to put this to bed and ensure that uh, our people in Basa are safe. Talking about land, because land is very important, the government is in charge of the land, even though it belongs to citizens. Um, if one of these issues is an issue of land, that's where the government should come in first, right? And help us to understand which, I mean, in Nigeria, we understand that these clashes happen, especially because of land. Uh, it happens in Cross River, between Cross River and Akwaibum, the two people, and you know, the people in Odupani, they have those issues. But then that's where the government should come in to, disturb, to determine where these boundaries are. That is one way to deal with the issue. And then again, you have to go to the grassroots to, you know, like I said, get to the core. I, I find it difficult when governments tell us that, oh, it's this man from this place that came in here to cause trouble. Uh, how secure, sh shouldn't your people in your state be safe and secure, so much so that an outsider cannot come and disrupt the peace that you have in the land? I remember your principal had been campaigning for presidency, and, and part of the things that he was campaigning with was that he has successfully brought peace and security to the people of Kogi State. I'm beginning to doubt that if an issue is... Let me not, you know, make it seem as simple, but an issue as um, big as communal crisis and somebody coming in from another state to cause trouble in, in your state has not been handled for this long, and now it's claimed at least 10 lives. Should we still be discussing that now, especially at the close, almost at the close of his administration? I, I think uh, we need to set the record. Uh, we, are not, we are not talking about 10 lives. We are saying less than 10 lives because we are putting um, uh, the figures together. And also, I have I've just confirmed to you uh, that the state government has set up um, a team that is working very closely with um, Nasara state government uh, to ensure that we get to the roots of the matter from there. How so long has this? How long has this team are, been on for? Are, how long? How with, long? Uh, just like, let me land on this thought. We are dealing with a lot of we are dealing with a lot of factors on this matter. It is just one of the factors. We are, we are, we are we're talking about the issue of um, uh, land dispute. We are talking about issues that has to do with fish ponds. We are talking about issues as simple, as trivial, as even culture, masquerades, and all of that. You know, it has to do with the stakeholders, the stakeholders in those communities. And that is why the state government ensured they came in very strongly to bring out these stakeholders to come and answer questions with law enforcement agencies. We have also been able to put the whole thing um, um, in calm as we talk because we, we are able to mobilize the security architecture, the entire security architecture uh, and might of the security agencies in the state of the place. Among personnel carriers are there as we speak, and we have been able to, to stem the tide. Uh, the crisis has gone down significantly, but we are digging to the root because we don't want to solve it now and tomorrow to come up again. So as a very responsible administration, uh, that, that has won so many awards in security, we don't want this to tarnish um, our, our credentials as far as security of lives and, and property is concerned. And that's why we are, we are zeroing in to ensure that everybody and anybody that has been involved in the crisis is brought to justice. Many of them have been arrested. We have been able to recover a lot of arms. And the people are confident today that their, their government, the government they elected, has stepped in to do its primary responsibility. We are not seeking for commendation for this. The governor stepped in. I remember that a few days ago, till 2 a.m., he was still in touch with the state security advisor and all the security heads in the state to ensure that the place is peaceful. And as I'm talking to you now, it is significantly uh, very peaceful. And uh, you know, and you also need to understand that it's a very difficult terrain because you have to cross, cross the river from Lokoja uh, to get to Basa. But the people from Nasarawa can easily 
you know, infiltrate. And that's what we are working on with our uh, border security um, agencies to ensure that we don't allow them to get in, into, into the states to foment trouble. Going forward, uh, just as you've said, very interesting. You have said that the government is working, you know, tirelessly to make sure that this is put to bed. Um, but then again, let's look at some of the things that are at the core of issues like this. It could be poverty. It could be, um, you know, ignorance. And then you have said there are some things that are as funny as, you know, culture or masquerades, which I don't think should be an issue. Uh, but what is the level of um, awareness or... Um, I mean, because everybody does not have to have formal education, but is there some form of grassroots um, awareness program that would help the people understand that they're all together, they're one people, and killing one another for land that nobody's going to go to their graves with uh, is, should, should not be a thing that divides them? Because, of course, we already, as a country, are divided across ethnic and religious lines. What, is there anything that the grassroots that is being done at the grassroots, whether in collaboration with local governments or even community heads? Thank you very much. Uh, you know, the, the, the strength of our security in the state is not just because we of the armed-bearing security agents. It's beyond that. Uh, you know, the strength of our security um, accomplishments as a government has to do with intelligence, has to do with enlightenment, has to do with the partnership between the government and the people of the state. And that has been working uh, uh, well uh, for the people of the state. We have lines that even people in the villages can quickly call uh, for them to have the intervention of security uh, agents. And that has been working uh, very seriously for us. If you go to the smallest village in Kogi State as a visitor today, immediately you will see that they will report your entrance to that village to the community head. You will be screened, and they will be able to find out the kind of person you are and your mission in that community. All these things have been working well. Apart from that, my ministry in the, in the past few months had gone around the state doing a lot of sensitization and orientation. We call it the town hall meetings. We have gone around the, the, nine, uh, the nine federal constituencies in the state to sit down with the stakeholders, the local government administrators, traditional rulers, youth groups, women groups, and all of that, to tell them the partnership that the higher below administration uh, has brought to be. You know, because, you know, you need to carry them along in the security architecture of the state. And that's working uh, very well. As, as when you're talking about poverty, but some people are some of the most resourceful uh, people in Nigeria. You know, with the river, with the, with, with, the, with, the, with the water bodies around them, they are people that are economically viable. And they are great farmers. They are great hunters. They are great uh, fishermen and women. And that has been able to boost their economy to a very large extent. I think it has to do with the age-long hostility between the two major ethnic groups. And as far as the state government is concerned, the traditional rulers in those places have not done enough to ensure unity and peace. And that's why uh, you, 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 you got that report that the two frontline traditional rulers were brought to Lokoja and the security agents were able to probe into the activities. And we have a lot of information. Anybody that is involved in that will definitely be brought to board. You know, the, the, the Office of the State Security Advisor has been doing a lot of, a lot of work on this to ensure that the people are sensitized, to ensure that the people are safe, to ensure that those who have broken the law do not go scot-free. That is what we are doing uh, to, to, to sound a very strong to uh, perpetrators of evil, not only in Basa, but across the state, that when you do it in Kogi State, you will not go scot-free. The Honorable Commissioner for Information in uh, Kogi State, thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, we'll keep our eyes on that story and hopefully uh, something good comes out of it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. That's our show for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow talking for development. And uh, my name is Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.